it's that time again. 3D printer build. <laughs> finally, I finally get to this one. The Creality CR10 S4. 40 centimeter cubed build volume. I'm not looking forward to buying a sheet of print and Z for this. It's probably going to be like 40 bucks. <laughs> but it's going to be cool. This was sent to me by GearBest. Thank you very much. I will now do my typical pause the video, come back for each segment. This one's going to take a little while to yank out of here. You can see it takes up the entire table, this box. It's incredible. Holy crap, this thing is a monster. The packing is identical to the CR-10, just bigger. This was on top, below that layer was this and this and this. So you have your brain box, your base, which is your Y-axis and your heat bed, and your gantry and X-axis and Z-axis, and of course your goodie box. So far it is looking like this printer has all of the current upgrades. So it's got the injection molded parts for the end caps. It's got the injection molded captures for the Z screws. It has the injection molded blower. And everything looks perfect. It's all, I don't see a single 3D printed part so far. I don't know if it has a filament detection thing. I'll find out in a minute. Actually, can I tell from here? Yes, it probably does because there's a wire for it. So it probably has filament detection. We'll see if it's the injection molded one or the 3D printed one. Since I'm seeing injection molded everywhere, it's probably the injection molded one. So I'm going to clear this off and open up the goodie box and show you that. Alrighty, the goodie box has been eviscerated. Here's everything that's inside the goodie box. You have your basic instructions. It's the same as the any other CR10. It's the it's identical. It's just 400 millimeters bigger on X and Y. Your parts list, your bomb packing list, um, instructions for dealing with the plugs, instructions for making sure you remember to attach your Z rods since so they come disconnected so they don't get damaged in shipping. I still want to see Creality. This is obviously an earlier model than the CR10S I got because I still want to see Creality make an instruction manual. Um, I, it does have the filament detection, but it's 3D printed. But it's the new style. It's the um, it's not the square block. It's this actually looks like the injection molded one, and um, it's actually in parts. You can actually unscrew this, take it apart. So this was probably their final revision before they finally said, "Okay, it's good enough. Let's get it injection molded." So it looks like I have an iterative step between what other people were getting with the straight up just a square block for the. Um, filament detection to this closer to the final revision part PTFE tube inside of there it's good no drag and so um, this will fit on just like the injection molded one but it's 3d printed very nicely 3d printed by the way I'd be proud of that that is not a bad print and I'm assuming that's ABS that's actually pretty impressive for an ABS print not bad so there's your film detection your tape your glass and big piece of tape are up here did they use the new heat bed Oh, it looks like they did update the heat bed. The original S4s had an aluminum plate, and then the CR10 S3 300 by 300 heat bed was just attached in the middle. So the heat bed only went out to here. So all the outside edge wasn't even didn't even have a heater under it. This has a full arm heat bed that's 400 by 400. Very good. Another again iterative upgrade. I might be coming across as a fanboy, but I think they deserve it. They are actually listening to the community. They are making the changes we are asking for that are reasonable, that make sense, and they are implementing them iteratively, not in next generation's printer, but in the existing printer. If you bought an S4 two months ago, you didn't get this, you didn't get this, you didn't get a lot of this stuff. Now if you buy an S4, the upgrades are included. That is what I want to see from a manufacturer implement the upgrades in real time, put it right into your supply chain. That's what you're supposed to do. That is a responsive manufacturer. I really hope they keep doing that. I hope other manufacturers like Anet and TiVo, who also appears to be going that direction, we'll see, um, learn from Creality. And learn that if you want loyalty, if you want to make a lot of money, make your customers happy. Happy victims keep coming back. Don't forget that. <laughs> Spool holder, mount, US cord, your T-bars with your end stops and your screws, your clips, uh, some spare parts, nozzle, compressor, spare bolt, spare hammer nuts, USB cable, 
your nippers, your zip ties, your wrenches, and your Allen keys. The acupuncture <laughs> for your nozzle, your SD card reader and memory card, probably a SanDisk or Kingston, if it's the same as they've been doing. SanDisk Edge, looks like that's the new one they're going with now. And of course, the very much appreciated, sharpened um, part removal and spare PTFE tube. And it looks like it's a good PTFE tube. Sizing looks right. That's it. I'm going to pause you again as I tear this apart and begin the assembly process. And of course, your spool filament. Alrighty, I got my M58 millimeters so that I can switch to my top of the gantry ender spool holder with the spool that comes with it. Everything else got put away, so I don't need it right now. And for you guys with the plastic fetish, there you go. Here's your porn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta move this out of the way, so I did that now. <laughs> and I'll be back after I tear this apart. Remember, first thing you're gonna do, and I'm gonna do this right now, is you take your wrenches and you make sure every single bolt on this printer is tight. Be very careful with the tiny bolts, they strip easy. The bigger ones, you can get a little you know, frisky with them. Make sure they're all tight because any loose bolt is going to cause wiggle, it's going to cause shifting, and it's going to mess up your prints. Hey, Creality, how about selling rolls of this? I know people who will give their left kidney to get tape this wide. <laughs> might not be a bad idea to sell sheets of rolls of this real cheap, because I know it's cheap, just you know, make it available. The glass is actually sealed in plastic. I had to cut it open. That's amazing. <laughs> that is one very healthy piece of glass. And it appears to be absolutely flat. I do not see any bowing. It looks very nice. It's got the nice sanded edges, nice curved edges, and it is the full size of the print bed. Very, very cool. That is an amazing piece of glass. There we go. Got rid of all the funky plastic, and I've tightened up every single bolt on the printer. Nothing was loose. It was all very tight. Congratulations, Reality. Um, you will not be able to install ultimate print knobs on this printer. As you can see, they would interfere with the beams here. Since this has double beams, one beam would never be sturdy enough, it interferes. So I'm gonna have to make a smaller set of these that just barely fits in here. There is room to make bigger, but not much, sadly. Um, the belt is beefed up. This whole entire bracket is beefed up. This bracket back here is beefed up. It actually wraps around the extrusion, and it's, it looks like a a beefier metal slightly but this is definitely beefier and also a larger stepper motor back here um, the wires in doesn't look like it'll touch anything nope it's far enough away it doesn't touch okay. the Y carriage underneath um, plate feels very flat you did a good job of making that flat it's nice and thick and it is a full-size heat bed unlike the original S4 which had the 300 by 300 heat bed attached to the middle of the plate didn't work very well. Um, the belt is bigger, so it handles the larger mass better because you can put several kilograms of plastic on top of this thing plus its own mass. Also, nothing you can do while it's unplugged, you grab the belt here and just yank it back and forth. You notice on some printers, when you do that, the belt twists as it's being torqued. This doesn't. Good belt tension and the proper belt for this mass. That's good. The hot end was absolutely tight. It needs no adjustment whatsoever, not even a single wiggle. Belt is properly tensioned. All of these bolts are properly tightened. I haven't found a loose bolt yet on the machine. Good job. As usual, gantry is attached. Just tip it over like this while holding it here, lined up. Fred screws in by hand. Snug them down, don't tighten. Come around to the other side, same thing, just grab it here, line them up, thread the screws in by hand, snug them down, put all four snug down, then you turn the wrench that way and you crank them tight. Um, don't forget to check your bed, make sure you have no wobble this way, no wobble this way, 
There is one thing I did notice that is missing from this printer, probably because the geometry is slightly different. No tension relief for the bed. Hopefully that's something that somebody will design and I can print one out and put one on here. It looks like it's close, but it looks like the geometry is a little bit different than the other printer. So you probably can't use the existing Y tension brace to do the job. So hopefully he'll design one for the S4. If not, maybe I can modify it somehow. It should just be a scaling issue. Just scale it so that it the hole lines up with the edge here. Um, if you do need to adjust your bed, check your wheels. Grab each wheel. Make sure they don't turn. They shouldn't turn free. Um, use a wrench on the adjustable nuts inside there. And where are they? They're on the outside. So you would just stick your wrench here. Flip it over. Well, this is off. It's a lot easier. Uh, mine came perfectly tight. Didn't have to adjust a thing. So they're getting better. Next up is your T-brackets. Don't forget the plain one goes on the plain side of the printer and the busy one goes on the busy side of the printer. Easy way to remember that. Tighten down your nuts in advance. You might have to loosen and turn the whole thing so that these two are vertical and these two are horizontal and that little bugger will slip right in there. Boom. Done. Now you loosen the nuts to push the hammer nut in then you look in through the side, turn the nut tight, make sure you see that hammer nut turn and lock and gauge inside the extrusion. That's it. Physical assembly is done. It's mechanically together. I have put my ender holder up top there. Um, now comes wiring, just connecting the brain box to everything. Alright, we are almost done electrically wiring this. I just need to connect the last stepper motor here. This is your Z stepper. I run the cable outside the printer and then bring it up around the outside. And the reason for that is to make certain that the bed never has a chance to grab this cable. See, now it's totally out of the way of the bed. You never have to worry about snagging. Um, I zip tied this cable to the filament detection. That will keep that from drooping down onto the bed. I can't attach this cable to the bundle because I don't think it's tall enough. I might not even be able to leave it attached to the filament bundle because I don't think this cable is long enough. So I wish Creality would um, fix that. Please start making this longer. In fact, I'm almost certain it's not going to be long enough. Yeah, that needs to hang free in order to be long enough to go all the way to the top. And the problem is, by not being able to capture it, there's a chance that this can snag on your model when you're printing. But also, it just it makes it very tight to fit the box. So, Crowley, please make this longer. That's it. We're about to do first boot up. As usual, check your voltage. It should come default to 220, which is safe. Because if you plug 220 into 110, nothing happens. The other way around, magic smoke. So I will switch mine to 110 volts. Good to go. It does have the upgraded SD card slot, so it is... Um, a captured slot, it's filled, it's not, there's no hole to go into. It looks like I got all of the upgrades that Creality has currently done except for the Y tension, which is probably because it will be a different physical dimension than the original one, so they can't just include the one they made. And the filament detection is 3D printed, but it is the final design for the 3D printing. It looks like it's the same shape as the injection molded one that I have, so um, it, I'm assuming it's going to work fine. It, it's, it's just a little circuit board to switch inside. I'm guessing anybody who buys an S4 now, it'll come with the injection molded one. Since my CR10S was about a month newer than the S4, and I got the injection molded with the CR10S. So I'm guessing you will get the injection molded if you order it now. Time for boot. Ah! <laughs> Creality 3D. Printer comes up. 18C. Let's see if I get a temperature reading. There you go. Bumped up to 19. So the thermistors are working. Let's make sure it actually heats up. Auto home. X works fine. Don't forget to get any stragglers from the packaging off the printer. Y works fine. Y in stop works fine. Z works fine. 
Z and stuff works fine. Let's try pre meeting. Prepare PLA. Nozzles going up. Bed is going up slowly. That's it. Everything works. Accesses work. Bed works. Thermistor works. Nozzle works. Mechanics work. Printer's ready to go. I wonder what's included on the SD card. I bet you it's a cat. <laughs> SD, print from SD. I still have not looked at what that Lausilumo is. L A O S I L U O M U dot G code. No idea what that is. But there is a cat. So I will print a cat. Except I'm not even going to bother using the included roll of filament. I'll use that for something else. I'm going to go straight to what I'm going to print on this first. If the cat and my test prints work out correctly, I'm going to go straight into printing a 100-hour print. Why not? <laughs> Getting ready to do bed level and first print. Um, don't forget, if you're laying down your tape... Uh, by the way, when I put the bed on, the temperature of the bed immediately went from 45 to 40. The glass sucked enough heat out of the bed that it dropped the temperature to 40. It's only 18C in the house, so it's a little cold but it's on its way back up now. I don't expect it to be a very fast heat bed, simply because of its size. Um, I'll see if there's a link for Amazon, but you can just go to your local Rite Aid and buy this bottle of 91% alcohol. It comes in a little spray bottle, very convenient. Only buy one. Buy two bottles while you're there. One of this and then one of the refill bottle, and just refill this, because you get a lot more in the refill bottle than you get in this, but you need this so that you can spray it down. It's gonna cool that bed down nicely. Um, you want to make sure that you wipe down your tape because there's an anti-stick coating on the tape. And that anti-stick coating will inhibit the ability of your prints to stick. So whenever you use tape, make sure you wipe it down. Same thing when you're using BuildTac or Print&Z or um, whatever the other surfaces that are out there are. Um, what, a glass, anything. Uh, well, glass is different. That's hairspray. But um, make sure you wipe it down with alcohol because your oils from your hand as you touch and play with your print bed will inhibit the ability of your filament to stick. That would be bad. More to come as I level the printer. Alrighty, next you need to level your gantry. I had to turn mine two notches. So you take a ruler, set it on top of the bed, and measure how high the gantry is on this side. On this side, I am 127 millimeters. On this side, I was 125 millimeters. So I turned that stepper motor a little bit, forced it to turn by grabbing the coupler and turned it, and now this one's 127. So my X gantry is level crammed to the bed, which is already compressed all the way down, pretty much. So now I'm going to go through the auto leveling process, which all it really does is move your components to the right spot. So it'll move it here, 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 and here, so that you can, you'll just hit next step, next step, next step, and level it. So hang on one moment. It put it into position. I then loosened both of these screws at the same time to raise the bed up until it was the proper gap from here. If you don't have the um, ability to eyeball it like I do, you can just take a, um, you know, a reasonably, a slightly thicker than normal piece of paper, like a regular piece of copy paper, and you know, slide it in there and adjust it until you can just feel the nozzle grab the paper. You don't want to compress it. Just, just grab it. You should be able to easily slide it in there and pull it back out again. And then you live tweak when you're printing. Um, also, make sure the um, there's no no a splooge on the end of the nozzle because that's going to affect your gap. Okay. And then we go to next step. It lifts up and goes to the back. And now I do the same thing. I'll be right back. Interestingly enough, it looks like they used the auto bed leveling movement routine from the CR-10 because it's only going out to 300 millimeters, not 400. Which is fine, that'll level just fine. But I thought that was interesting that they used the same routine as the the S-300. And the center looks good. 
I'm going to raise it just a hair because it looks a little bit too close for my taste. So you do all four, just a tiny bit, and I like what I see. So now, I will print something. I've begun my test prints print where it'll print a Marvin, a Benchy, and a Rocket, and it's looking good. I had to move the adjustment reel just one little bit to make it a little too far away. Just one little turn, done. It's now printing perfectly. Looking good. Alrighty, I'll be back once it's done a couple of these prints. Well, it is done. Marvin, Benchy, and Rocket. Three hours, 11 minutes. I sped it up a little bit for the top of the rocket. Should have taken like three hours, 20. Okay, the phone app crashed, so I thought it stopped recording. So you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot. I'll show that better in the proper camera video, but there's the Marvin. I see no issues. Looks identical to any other CR10 print. Boat came out good. The ringing is slightly more, maybe. That might just be the um, the black filament showcasing it more, but not horrible. It is moving around more mass. And then, of course, the base print rocket. And this is the Zyro Twinkling Black. Very cool. <sighs> the first big print. I want to print this as big as I can on this S4. It took my computer three and a half hours to slice it, and I am still waiting for it to bring up the dialog to let me save the G-code. And I'm probably going to have to do it again, because um, it's saying 178 hours and 2.73 pounds of plastic. And that's hollow. That's with four perimeters, 25% honeycomb infill for the base. Wow, so I'm going to drop it to three perimeters and I'm going to put 15% infill for the base and see if I get lucky with that because holy crap, 180 hours, that's seven days. Probably more like eight days since my jerk and acceleration is going to add a little bit to that. Has anybody ever done a print that long on a consumer grade printer? <laughs> that, that will be interesting. I think I'm going to give it a go, though. I think it'll be fun. So, yeah. Stay tuned. I am impressed with the S4. There's nothing to not be impressed about. It works as well as I expect any other CR10 to work. And I am glad to see all the improvements make it to all of their printers. All of the 3D printer parts replaced with injection molded parts now. Um, I expect they'll probably have a wide tension mechanism for this soon. And um, I expect that they... Any model you buy now will come with the injection molded filament um, sensor. I don't. Th I think that's. I got one that was just before that happened, and I am very pleased to see the full size heat bed instead of the 300 by 300 heat bed glued on the bottom. One catch though, it is 65 degrees in the house here Fahrenheit. I think it's about 18 degrees Celsius. The thermistor said 18 degrees. I set the bed for a hundred just for shiggles. After three hours of printing, it only managed to get the 64. So at 18C, 64C is the highest you're going to get. <laughs> you ain't doing ABS with this. No, 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 no. Uh, with an enclosure, you'll get higher. So if I were to put an enclosure around this, then the bed would be in a different ambient environment, and it could then reach those higher temperatures. So with an enclosure, you could do ABS with this. But out in the open not happening but um, I am impressed it did reach 50 pretty quickly like you know seven or eight minutes you know a reasonable amount of time like a CR 10 and that's it I will provide more prints as I make them obviously the prints from this are going to come quite a bit slower because they take quite a bit longer and now I question whether I should begin a 178 hour print without a battery backup power is pretty stable here but 
That would suck. Yeah, that would really, really suck. <laughs> I can't believe it's gonna take that long. Oh my god. Uh, that's it. You guys have a great night. Thank you for watching.